Good morning. It's uh, five minutes of four. We are at the Lincoln Woods parking lot, which you can see already pretty much full. There's cars lined up on the road because that's what happens on Memorial Day weekend. It is like, I don't know, it's like a bluegrass festival. There's just cars everywhere, um, but there's no music. We are going to be hiking today up Owl's Head Mountain, which is one of the 4,000 footers. Allison is almost done with her list. Um, this hike will be 18 miles. So this is the longest hike that we've done on the continent, I believe. Um, so that's kind of exciting, I guess. But uh, my, my back is gonna hurt because we've got tons of water. Um, you can hear water behind us. We're bringing, you know, sanitizing gear as well for the water um, if we need more. And uh, yeah, Celtics won a buzzer beater last night, so that's nice too. So here is the iconic bridge at the start of the trail. Um, the bridge that we're quite familiar with at this point. But here's the morning view. That way is the road we came in on. Not all those cars are going up Owl's Head, of course. Um, this is one of the bigger parking lots for hiking in the Whites. If you do, if you do hike in the Whites, you've been here. We've been here a number of times, um, hiking different mountains, most memorably probably Flume. But we've been in and out. I've taken the kids here snowshoeing. Um, our church used to do our annual ski trip here. We've moved it. But this was a popular place for those of us who don't ski. Um, anyway, though, it's got this long, long rail bed that starts the hike, all the hikes. So you go over that bridge and then you walk for what feels like forever to get to your more interesting trailhead. For us, that means about a two mile hike to Black Pond and then um, about half a mile into Black Pond and then some bushwhacking. So that'll be a whole thing. Um, but this part of the trail is really quite flat and quite dull. So uh, I'll stop talking. Though it has its adherence, Owl's Head is one of the least popular hikes on the 48, 4,000 footer list in New Hampshire. A lot of this has to do with the distance, of course, but there's also water crossings and some sketchy trails and the mental challenge of what is basically a long and unremitting tree tunnel. So here, you can see some of the old rail ties. They didn't really take them out. They kind of sit, mostly they're gone. Um, but you know, there's these rough patches, particularly rough when you're um, snowshoeing. Here, they're just lightly annoying. So this might be the moment to um, point out that Owl's Head is the only New Hampshire 4,000 footer, or at least on the 4,000 footer list, that um, doesn't have a maintained trail to the top. So we're actually going to take a few bushwhacks. And by bushwhack, in this case, we actually mean trail. Um, just sort of trodden down by people climbing and hiking around here. It's not like literally we won't be whacking any bushes, I guess, is what I'm saying. We didn't bring a machete. It's not that kind of experience. But it can get confusing. There aren't any blazes. They're not super well marked. So we brought all our navigation stuff as well to make sure that we can 
ultimately make it through the vaguer parts. But, uh, but yeah, so that's, that's just one of the weird dimensions of this trip. So here's our first of many stream crossings. And uh, this is where I tell you that I forgot my sandals. So um, that should be exciting. So this is where we came from. And then the main trail continues this way. Do you remember the name of the main trail? Uh, it's the Franconia Brook Trail. Franconia Brook Trail. But we are going to go over here and get off that now to go to Black Pond, 0.8 miles this way. Probably where we'll stop and have our breakfast. And then we will uh, do our first bushwhack. So this trail is not one for views. This may be, this may be it other than um, there's a slide uh, as you're going up. We still have miles to go before we get to the mountain, but there's a slide there. But this is a nice spot for breakfast. Um, I think we see the uh, bushwhack, which is in fact, looks just like a trail, just like they said, so. Um, so that's a good sign. All right, it's actually not super clear, but certainly followable. And uh, sort of pick your way through the woods for a minute. And then it gets a little bit better after a marshy spot. So not only do I make poorly produced hiking videos, um, I consume them. And when I was consuming videos for this hike, about a third of the people who tried the bushwhack from the pond got lost. And two thirds are like, I don't know how you could get lost. Well, we're part of the third. Um, just take that into account if you're gonna do this hike. Um, we used uh, this thing and a paper map and a regular old compass and an all trails phone app and eventually made it back after taking a big arc around. So I don't think we saved any time. We are farther up than we would have been otherwise, but not by much. Um, so just be advised if you're not ready to take an explore of pathless tracks of woods, um, either physically, mentally, or just you know, with the equipment, um, then just stay on the normal trail. It's, it's, it's not worth the annoyance. Later, we realized that we weren't all that far behind. We had missed the bushwhack entirely and ended up on Lincoln Brook Trail directly. It would have been nice to know because morale was a bit low for a while. So it's quarter past eight, roughly. We've been on the trail for about three hours. Um, we're taking a break here at the water. Shortly after getting lost, we put in a little bit of time. Sometimes you choose a high degree of difficulty when you're hiking because the challenge reminds you that you can do hard things. By doing these things in isolation, away from the high stakes areas of love and real life, we can get the practice we need. We can develop the confidence that perseverance and problem solving bring. We can look back and recognize that while no true mountain is the hardest mountain we climbed, we did the deed and can keep going on with hope, even when we do not know the way. So we just had to uh, wade across 
couple screens. It's a little too wide. Um, man, the water's cold. But that should be the last one, and uh, we should be hitting the mountain soon. So that's good. So this is a pleasant part of the hike after crossing the stream. Um, the trail is looking more like a normal trail. No rail ties, things like that. We're also not lost and just bushwhacking through the woods, which is nice. And uh, you can see every once in a while we pass um, some of the owners of those cars we saw in the lot who camped along the stream last night and they're sort of packing up now. So all good. So in the end, we came up this rocky bit. Um, just, you know, looks like a, at least sometimes a uh, stream bed. And then we're going to turn here and go up this trail. You see these cairns, one on the left, one on the right. Some backpacks for some people who are coming back down this way, I think. Um, but that's the way you go up, um, which is the second of our three bushwhacks of the day. This one is used more frequently, I think. And I think the reason why it's used more frequently, see, there it is again, is that um, it has your only view. About halfway up, there's a slide. It is, in fact, called the slide bushwhack, and uh, you can look off of that, and of course we will. But first, there's a great log here right in front of me, and I'm going to sit and... Uh, Take a load off, have another snack, and get ready for the actual climb. We're about seven miles in, and only now is it getting terribly steep. So you feel every single step of those miles to get here when you hit this very um, steep climb. But, uh, but this is your one view and it's very nice. That's uh, Lincoln on the left and then there's like a, whatever you call that, a slide. Um, North Lincoln right above it and then Lafayette on the right. Um, we climbed those a while ago. It's nice to see them from this angle. Although, unfortunately, we're still below them, which means we have a heck more of this to do. behind us. We're heading back into the trees near the top. We're still going pretty much straight up. made it to the top. It was a long flat part, but I stopped filming for a long time, I have to admit, because there's nothing to say or do. It just kept going up and up, as mountains do. Um, I'm sitting, lying down, really. There's the top. 
Um, there is no view. But uh, I think we'll sit here for a little while because we have a long way to go down. It took us um, about four hours, 20 minutes. What? Four hours, 20 minutes. Is that about right? To get here? Um. I think that's right. Uh, six hours, 20 minutes. Six hours and 20 minutes to get up to the top. Oh my God. The way down took a little bit less time, about four hours and 20 minutes. Um, we of course had gravity on our side and um, a relatively fast push down the mountain. Okay, you see this big rock right here? It's big, there's a cairn on it. If you go around the rock and head down, you will go down the slide, which is how we came up. However, if you go to the left of the rock, like this, you end up on the third of the bushwhacks. Hopefully it does not lead us astray. So, not too long ago, we crossed the stream. We had to wade once and then use the log the second time. Um, we got down uh, the third bushwhack, which is actually called Brutus Bushwhack, which my wife thinks, and I concur, might be because it constantly betrays you. It, uh, was definitely the way to go down. It's a little bit easier, but it's a lesser of two evils sort of situation. Um, neither was really great. But now we are heading back for real. We still probably have a good five, six miles to go. Um, we may try the bushwhack again if we can find it and it looks good and just see where we went wrong um, the time before. Uh, it would be nice to go and see uh, black pond one more time and it is supposed to be a teeny bit shorter so if any of that seems interesting i'll jump in and tell you about it otherwise this may be it for me so the rest of the way took a while but it was pretty straightforward we did end up finding that first bushwhack once again and going the other way it was hard to figure out how anyone would miss it we got back to Black Pond, took a break there, and headed on out. At the beginning, I said that Owl's Head is somewhat controversial, or at least dreaded by many hikers. It takes a long time. There's no way that this isn't a hard hike. Is it the hardest we've done? Not really. There have been others with other issues and other difficulties. But this one certainly wasn't easy. And it reminded us of the challenges and transitions, not just on a walk in the woods, but in life itself. For many people, myself included, everything right now seems to be in flux. Work, family, and school all conspire to create chaos in our lives. Nature too is in flux. Even without the brutal killing of the environment perpetrated by humanity, we can look around us and see that living things grow, live their assigned cycle, and die. The natural world reminds us that we are a part of it, that the continuous transition we witness and experience comes from being part of that whole vast organism. Our failing is when we lose track of this organism and start to believe that we, the constituent parts, are the beginning and the ending.